Lynch, overseeing the Inland Public Safety Manager at the New York County Visitor Bureau. And today we're going to be talking about new gadgets cool. and trends. And we are joined by three members of our advertising agency, Delta and Lincoln. We've got Katie, who Hi, is our morning. social media expert. We have Jessica, who is our PR professional. And there she is. <laughs> and we also have Scott who is um, a website and best practices specialist. And we're also joined by two members of the online mapping company, Trail Genius, Jason and Amanda. So with that, Thank you. over to you. Hello, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm just curious, who signed up for this session just because you read the word drone in it? <laughs> Good. So we'll get to all the fun toys. Our plan for this session was, uh, I'm just gonna give you a little quick background on Trail Genius and what we do, and give a little demo on uh, the project we're doing right now with Door County Visitors Bureau, and then we'll jump into some demos with augmented reality and all the cool gadgets it takes to pull this off, and then we'll turn it over to the b &L team and they'll talk about some cool live social media streaming options and how you can apply it to your business. So, we'll jump right in here. Uh, so we are Trail Genius, Amanda and I, and uh, I'm the owner of the company, and I do sales and some marketing and all the tech gadget stuff, and then Amanda does the marketing, social media, and graphic design. And uh, so essentially, we create an online interactive experience, and this can be applied to all kinds of different things, sporting experiences, to golf courses, we can do indoor applications, and I'll show you the technology and give some demos of what I mean by all that. Um, so we're based out of Green Bay, and so naturally most of our projects are all around the Midwest, so it's a bunch of dots there of all the locations we've worked with so far, but we also get to work around the country. We've mapped a whole bunch of different events, triathlons all over the country, and then also have some projects that cover the whole globe. And you can see all this stuff on, online. The core of what we do is promote tourism. So our maps or our interactive experiences get embedded online to your websites and our websites. And the whole point of it is to show people what you have to offer and hopefully get them to come experience it or that they're better informed when they do experience it, that they know exactly what they're getting into. And since it's all online, everything's trackable. So we also can provide some good market research on who's watching this video or who's watching this, looking at this picture, just basic Google Analytics that you may not get from other marketing efforts. And then advertising. It's a great advertising tool. We're integrating into social media so you can share all different aspects of the experience that we make for you. And we can also integrate other businesses advertising into our so our client mix is all over the board from trail clubs to companies, any type of merchant, business, and government as well. So we're working with the Door County Visitors Bureau on a multi-year project, and I'll jump into that here in a little bit. It's uh, focusing right now on the five state parks, and we've done the summer experience, which is live on the Visitors Bureau's page right now, and we've spent the last winter um, mapping as well and so we're working on developing all that and that will roll out for this coming winter and then there's other activities that we're discussing right now to complete the whole Door County experience. This is just a quick example of the map and all the features that it has and I'll jump into a live demo here and show you some of these things uh, which is right now. Um, any quick questions on that? There'll be a question and the answer session at the end if you think of something <coughs> later. So this is live, right now live on, on the internet. This is Peninsula State Park, and this is essentially the interface that you can get embedded into anybody's website. And the core of what we do is, is film every inch of a trail or an experience, and when you play it back, the dot on the map moves in sync with the video. So if you jump around in the video, the dot will update and you can see
see exactly what it looks like to be right there at that moment in time. And if it's a trail, you get all these stats, elevation profiles, so you know if it's an uphill trail or a downhill trail. And we can do this for anything, any activity, power sports, silent sports. And then in addition to that, we layer what we call hotspots. So all these little black icons are photos or videos, 360 pictures. So you can see what it's like to stand right there in all directions. So this is Spen's <coughs> Peninsula State Park. You see in that every intersection in the entire trail system. And we've done this for all the state parks up here. This is Rock Island. So we can layer same exact thing. We can put video. Um, you'll see in a moment all of our HR drones. We can put video we take in the exact location we were flying at the time. So that people get really well informed on what the experience is, and and then you can use this as a marketing tool or integrate it into social media, as I mentioned. So I can click this link; it generates on the fly a URL, and I just paste it into whatever social media that you want, or even a news blast, an email. And you can say, "Hey, come check out Rock Island; it's amazing." And they click on it; it goes to that exact spot in the map. They don't have to work to find it, and all this stuff's trackable what the impact is to people. So that's the basic overview of, of the maps, and I'll talk about how we can apply this indoors as well, and I'll show you a demo there too. So we're gonna jump into a, a little demo, we got some uh, switching of, of inputs to show you how we can take the map experience and connect it to print. And so I'm gonna show you a uh, an experience here that um, we did for Michigan. So we have an ad in the Michigan Trails magazine and we connect it. This is using augmented reality. Who knows what that is? I can explain that quick. If, um, so you probably heard of Am I doing that? Oh, no. okay. Um, no, that's fine. It was on silent. I don't know what happened. As I plugged it in, I heard birds, and I didn't know what happened. <laughs> I guess it was this idea. wasn't part of my plan. <laughs> so, um, virtual reality, probably most people have heard it's been around for a really long time. It's been cumbersome equipment. Well, smartphones and tablets are making all this uh, much more accessible. Virtual reality is where you typically, I think you have glasses on or a helmet, mm -hmm. and it completely overrides your vision system, and when you look around, it's a completely different world. Augmented reality is a half step to that. So this is a perfect example. I'm looking through my phone and I see something, but yet I'm still very aware of everything around me. So my reality is just augmented through a portion. And if you layer this with um, the right kind of apps, she's holding up this magazine, it's going to, oh, the video from the last session ended. Bear with me. Let me restart the app. It doesn't loop automatically, so when it's done, I think you just see a black. Are you still up there? Did it lose you? Is that close? Oh. Hold on, technical difficulties. <laughs> Let's see if like, the app maybe crashed on me. Okay. So you can all see her holding up a magazine. It's just a magazine. When I tap on this app, it will scan and look for something it recognizes. And it sees that this page has augmented reality to it. So it's now playing a video. We used to have audio. <laughs> Look for 
for something to trigger it, and it literally could be a picture on the wall if you want it, and then it will bring it to life. So there's a lot of applications there. Um, what else? Oh, so I think now we're going to jump into some cool gadgets really quick to show you the equipment that it takes to pull this off. Uh, I'll show you first three, the 360 experience. So this is a 360 photo that we took of the lunchroom. There we go. So this is not live. We took this last night as a demo, but using my phone, because this is just on the, it's on the internet. It's a link that you can click however you want to get to it. Uh, you can embed this into any website. And because I'm on a smartphone, it knows that my device has a gyroscope built into it. And it's using that to manipulate the picture. This is more augmented reality. And I can spin in any direction and look at anything as if I'm there. So you can imagine, we, so this is what we do at all the outdoor intersections and cool scenic views, but this is obviously inside. You could do every hotel room or you know your restaurant and people see what it's like to really sit there. Very cool. Um, so that is the computer stuff. I'll show you now the equipment. This is a 360 camera that would take that picture. There's two lenses that are back to back and inside this camera, when I say take a picture, it stitches them together and it makes it a 360 style photo and then the web interface brings it to life. So you can just walk around and take this in, you know, all over inside the place or outside. This is a 360 photo rig. So this is six GoPros, all aimed in different directions, and you sync them up, you hit record on all of them, and then you post, take a software package that stitches them all together and makes a ball of video. So when the video is playing, same kind of deal, just imagine a video comes to life, and I want to see what it's like to look over here or look behind. I'm still walking that way maybe, but you can look behind. Same kind of concept, just with video. Um, what next? Oh, so if you're taking just regular video, this device can be applied a bunch of different ways. This is called a gimbal, and you can mount smartphones or, or they have you know, big rigs like the movie industry uses these too. This has three servo motors that take out all of the motion behind the camera. So I can move all around the camera I can twist my hand, it's, it smooths all that out. And I'll show you in a little bit a live view of what this looks like. So you can do a walkthrough of some sort. We use this to do our mapping if we're doing a trail. Uh, Amanda's the one that, that hiked all the trails and I followed behind her and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> So this is a gimbal that gets used all over the place. It's a kind of a generic piece of tech. Uh, drones. So this is uh, a little bit above like a, the average style drone. It's kind of getting into like the prosumer grade, if that means anything to you. So it's a little over a grand. It has a gimbal built into it. So the camera, it's not on right now, but once powered up, this camera would sit, and I'll show you on, on the next drone. These have GPS built into them. This is a 4K camera. If it's very safe, like it knows if something's wrong with, with my controller or it, it will land, it will come back home automatically if the batteries get too low. And it uses GPS so I can program routes for it to fly. And if the subject is moving, I can pick something in my live video feed that's moving and it will automatically follow it. So then if I'm flying or spinning, it just keeps that subject uh, in the center of the screen. So they, these evolve quite a bit now. And the newest ones have sensors so that you can't fly it into anything. It won't let you slam into a wall. It, it senses it's coming and will override your controls. Hey Jason, how high in the air? Oh out? yeah. So these are, this is not a toy. Um, this one will fly about a third of a mile away. But there's FAA regulations that apply of whether that's legal or not. But just from the equipment standpoint, it'll fly beyond your ability to see it. And this one will fly, I think, like 
20 or 30 miles an hour. The next one can go almost to 50 miles an hour. So they fly so far that it's not practical to even use them that far away. Um, so this one's maybe just under a couple grand. Then there's the big boy. I'm going to connect um, this up so you can see a live view. You'll see the gimbal in action. Um, any basic questions yet? Or there's always a session later at the end. I mean, you can ask questions. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so this is a live lead, obviously, and when this is flying, the propellers go up. So it, now I I can film in 360 degrees, independent of how this is flying, which also could fly in any direction, and the gimbal's active. So whatever I do. It's stable and flies as it. And so if the wind is blowing it around, you'll see this thing up in the air wobbling. Or if I just want to move at like 50 miles an hour, this thing is probably going to be pitched like this. But the camera is nice and smooth. Any questions about that? Um, you have a question? No, oh, you're, oh, you're waving. Like people usually aren't that happy to see me. <laughs> Uh, this one is a little over four grand. This one gets up in the, the like you're, you're serious about flying ground level. So that the last little demo because the weather isn't good. I was gonna fly outside later, but it's just not safe. I'll do a little toy drone demo here with a safe one that. Um, wrapped in a ball so if it gets too close to you it, you won't get hit by propellers or anything <laughs> Yeah, all, all this could be applied to whatever you say, 
daughter had? She's a view master. You know, the things that he's been doing. Oh, oh. So, I mean, so these view masters that are now. Oh, yeah? And she can, she's loading apps. She's like, I'm in Paris. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had the Paris slide in the big disc yeah. when I was a kid. Now it's 360. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was born too early. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there's all a bunch of different options, but they all use the same stuff. It's smartphone apps. Um, so the technology, or now the effort, is really in just capturing the experience in that 360 world. It isn't in the delivery of it anymore. It used to big, big headsets and a like huge supercomputer hidden behind the curtain at shows and all that. That's all gone. Your phone does all that for you. Yeah, so in the ad, um, we so we made this ad, Amanda designed it, and what we did, because it is still new, like, and so you get it, we have the whole bottom of this is instructions, and this came actually from the, the, the app company that we worked with to make it, so all they do is provide the, the ability to bring this to life. We make the content, they just trigger it, and so it tells you what the app is and the quick little graphic of how to get it. So if they come upon this page, they'll get educated right there. And you know, as this becomes like more prevalent, that might go away and everybody just knows to do something. Yeah? Um, what's your process um, working with a new business? Like do you come and do an assessment and then have a proposal? Um, what is just your standard yeah. step? one through five yep. to initiate it, and then also what type of fee structure do you have? So you kind of laid out exactly what it's probably like most anything, right? We'll talk with you on what the scope of what you're looking to do is, and and then just figure out, you know, the cost is based on how much you do. Uh, it's, I guess it's no different than almost any other service. Um, so it's all over the board on if you want a couple photos taken indoors, or you want us to map five state parks, you know, it's just time, time and effort to pull all that off based on you know, the experience that you're looking for. So do you, do you have, um, but initially could we get in, in, information about, you know, de depending upon which device you're using, oh. it's this type of co cost or it's more you know, one day or, you know, oh, if, yeah. we, if we come to your location to do an assessment of what you offer, you know, what would be the good tools? Because I imagine that each type of business has could have different needs. Yep. And so do you do an initial proposal with an assessment of what would be good application of your, you know, yep. tools that you have, yep. and then uh, what you were, you would charge for that, and then your production schedule? So it's all driven on what you need. We figure out the technology and the gear to pull it off, so you don't have to worry about what drone I'm gonna fly or which camera I'll use. We just know what's right for you. Obviously, some of that stuff would affect the cost a little bit. Uh, we we don't have to physically be there even. We've done, like I said, projects over the world. Unfortunately, I never left the country for all that. So there are some ways to do things where we're not even there. You can send us content, and we can put it on an interactive map. It's all over the board. We've done projects that are like $2,000 up to a quarter million dollars that took three years. So it's all over the board, and we work with you to you know, fit your budget. Okay, the follow-up would be, do you charge for an initial assessment? Because no. partially I might not know what yeah. we need, and so it would be a conversation yeah. about, well, given these particular circumstances, yeah. we think you could have these components and we could do this. Yep. And that's an initial conversation. Yes, that's all for you. Yeah, we're not lawyers. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll work with you guys to, sorry, sorry there's lawyers in the room. <laughs> I don't have a filter. <laughs> but um, no, that's all for you to just explore what you guys need and want. And, and it's only us executing it to cost start. And so uh, there's a brochure and, and my business card on every table. Feel free to grab those and, and look them over if you are interested. Any other questions? There'll be a uh, session after these guys to ask more if you want. All right, cool. We'll take it away.
to God, uh, to, you know, to, to paint a, a water scene or whatever it may be. It's a great application to, to do a tutorial or a how-to series. And the key component to this is that you want to think ahead. The, you don't ever, or very rarely I should say, do you ever want to take to your periscope and say, I'm just going to broadcast today, without really knowing what or why you're broadcasting. And the reason why you want to give it some thought ahead of time is twofold. One, you want to make sure that the content that you're broadcasting is appropriate for the people who are watching and for your customers. Two, you also 
broadcasting is you the person versus you the business. So keep that in mind. Um, much like Periscope, also interactive, so it's a great way to um, correspond real time with people who have subscribed or have shown interest in your um, presentation. And the subscribe feature is really cool too. So let's say you, um, in your plan, you're thinking about doing this on a monthly basis. I'll use a shop, let's say you're, again, rolling out a brand new menu, you have new dishes that you want to showcase, maybe it's a question and answer session with a, a new chef, and you want to do this more than just once. So it's a great opportunity to say, okay, to all of our Facebook fans, we're launching this new live series where you can ask our chef um, whatever you want and we'll answer it. So if somebody's interested in seeing that and being notified every single time that you're uh, broadcasting live, they can then hit the subscribe button and then they're notified every time you go live. You can also save the video for later. And I should have mentioned earlier with Periscope too that for both Facebook Live and Periscope, you can save the videos that you shot on your smartphone. So perhaps you want to use the Periscope video and upload it to Facebook and be like, hey, did you know we're on Twitter? Did you know we're on Facebook? Did you know we're on Periscope? Well, now you do. And we'll also be broadcasting live next week. So make sure to join us. So those assets um, can be used in a variety of platforms. Also similar to Periscope, you will use Facebook um, Live for these type of applications. The, the how-tos, the behind the scenes are so instrumental in generating interest with your particular business. It could be a hotel, a restaurant, perhaps an attraction. Um, there's really no limit to the value that uh, a live broadcast can bring, but I, I stress that think about it ahead of time before you just jump in want it to be a value um, to, to your, your customer base. Question and answer sessions are also really great as well. Um, and it's a, a great way to, to build your Facebook community. So on your um, smartphone, when you're in the Pages app, this is what it will look like. You're always going to want to look for this little guy right here, which indicates that you have the live broadcast feature available to you in your page. So we have that. Then we say, okay, we want to go live, and then people can start asking questions and liking within the framework of your business page. So there's no app that's necessary to download other than you as the administrator on the, the Facebook Pages app. Anybody who happens to be following your page and is on Facebook at the same time will see your video pop up in their news stream and their feed, and then can interact with you um, as they wish. So,
talk about bringing it all together. Um, at being on the interactive manager, so I'll take a part in, you know, the, the bigger picture of the strategy and the content strategy. And I get to play with a lot of these great new tools and great new um, tech things, but also, but I need to figure out how it fits correctly with your company. Um, a good example is the Trail Genius and those and the bike maps. So, okay, that's a perfect fit, a perfect fit for great technology and great usage. It's great for Door County, the Visitor Bureau, it's great for the users, people that want to plan ride because you can just look at maps, but you know, you can see elevation, you can see what it looks like, a single track, a wide track, all that fun stuff. So it's a perfect fit. And that's where um, it's important for you to look at your company and what fits. Uh, you mentioned like a, a chef having a little like meet the chef once a week talk about preparing a certain dish. That's a good story, like that's a good fit, rather than just, hey, hey, this is here I am. Yeah. Uh, so making sure that there's a story <laughs> that you work with, and it makes sense for your customers and can ultimately help your business provide value. Um, do a little research. If you have, if you all have Facebook pages, send a little like, hey, we're gonna do a live broadcast. What do you guys want to hear? The Q and A's are important, uh, or looking at the follow up on the show, seeing like what people did like and didn't like. You know, you get to be your own little television producer. You can plan it out, you can figure, you know, let's do a little 10 minute broadcast, we'll do a couple minutes of this, a couple minutes of that, and you get to experience that. Like, it's important just to plan and have a, a big idea. Um, but ultimately, with all these great gadgets, this great social presence, your website is still keeping it. It's still where people will book a room, will look at your menus, where all of this traffic ends up going, having a great SEO strategy. It's ultimately getting to your website. So making sure that it is, that your house is in order, that your um, site isn't getting outdated. Um, year after year, probably about the last five years, it's always been, hey, it's gonna be the year of the mobile. It's gonna be the year of the mobile. That's not happening anymore because it's just is. Like how many people in here are understand what analytics are and at their own website analytics? Anyone? Have you been seeing like that mobile traffic hit 50%? past 50%, it's huge. Like, so it's not an option anymore. It's not like, you know, you can have budget for your website and then maybe mobile if you can. It's, um, a lot of purchases happen on mobile. It's quick, it's intimate, it has to happen. A um, couple reasons. Google is taxing you a little bit. If you don't have a great mobile site, you're gonna drop down a little bit. If a competitor has a great mobile site, better experience, they're gonna put that ranking above you, beyond keywords and all that stuff, which they attention to that. And it's important because Recently, I was in New York to Wincott. Google did a presentation and showed just specifically Wisconsin travel searches. It was over 60% and continued to grow at 87%. That's where people are exploring. Um, so let's take a look at the customer experience pyramid. As a business owner, you don't want the bare minimum. The bare minimum of websites that are the need. Here's a menu, here's what our rooms are, here's our phone number, this is the fudge we sell. That's just a bare minimum. And if you have an outdated site that's still maybe doing this, but when it isn't, it's not easy. It's not well laid out. It doesn't um, it doesn't meet the expectations of a modern web user that you know are on their phone. They want to be able to look something up on the desktop and then be sitting at the couch with their spouse and like, yeah, this is what I was talking about, just the, everything needs to kind of hand in hand. Because ultimately what we're looking for is an enjoyable experience. And what that comes with is uh, great content, cool interactive stuff, um, great photo, ultimately just kind of a good design, a good look that meets, again, the expectations of a modern web user. So let's talk a little bit about web trends. Um, if you look at the websites 10, 15 years ago, everything's real simple. It was just text and images. There wasn't too much flair. Um, but pretty swiftly, people found out that there were lots of textures, lots of layers. If you remember early Amazon, looked like paper tabs, almost like folders. That was popular for a while. Um, referred to the skewermorphic kind of things looked like shiny, glowy buttons or looked like arcade buttons and switches. Like it was real popular. Um, the last few, I'd say almost about five years, we saw a swing back to being ultra minimal. Um, and again, I think the pendulum was like almost too far, where it was, you couldn't really tell the difference between text and buttons. It was flat, it was all the rage. But thankfully, we found somewhere in the middle, um, the focus was on a good user experience. It became less about just the looks and just what is right. Um, a good example of that is you know, the old cap, the old calculator was, looked like an old drawn calculator. The swine for the flat where it's like, can't even tell the difference between you can watch this. You know, the numbers and then where you enter it. But balance in the middle of like, kind of blend the two. You can clearly tell the buttons, you can clearly tell where your enters and uh, where your tools are. But with, with, with the pendulum settling in the middle, it became 
best way to get them to what they're going at. I'm sure you've heard of like purchase funnels. Like what's the way to get them where you want them to go? And it's became just about a lot more than just what did your website look like? It became a lot more about how does it function? Does it successfully get to the goals that you want them to accomplish? Um, it's just, and I, as a designer, I've been doing this for a while, I love where we've settled because I've been on both ends of like being too minimal, too, too much, but just like the focus on the people coming, your customers, your potential customers, that focus is huge. Um, what that is, the content that we'll be looking at. Photos are so important. You can have the best headlines, the best copy, but if you have a dingy hotel photo, people are there like, that oh, looks like a murder happy. I don't want to say that because it's dark and scary. And you may have been well intended, you have your phone, maybe you picked up a nice camera at Best Buy, you took a little picture in your hotel room, maybe the flash was a little harsh. You emotionally respond to the images so instantly. No matter what the copy is below or the entities, you're going to respond to that. And videos have been growing with that. It's, uh, I was just, my eyes were open a little bit. I had my parents stay at our house for 12 days. And the TV never got turned on. I was expecting, like, we have a TV and we put a TV in our bedroom for them. I thought they'd want to watch TV. Never. They were just on their phones and their tablets. They were watching Facebook videos, YouTube's ads. And it was just like, there is so willing to absorb the content. It's important that you have some quality content there that can be live, that can be produced. Um, Door County is really great with producing uh, video series. Uh, Everyone who loves vacation uh, in Door County. <laughs> <laughs> but people react to it so viscerally that and so immediately that it's important to have it. But the writing supports it all. Like once they've made that reaction, you have to make sure that you're following it up on all of the content of the writing that it's on your brand voice. Um, later today, I think in this room, there's going to be a brand personification uh, presentation that Michael Spadola will be doing. And it's about discovering like, who you are as a you always write a you know, unified voice, so that if you tweet a Facebook post or a longer article on a simple description on your website, it's using a similar voice. Um, another thing that is really great, really common now is uh, leveraging evangelists and leveraging influencers, which is another breakout that we have today if you're able to pop into it. And these are people that maybe they have a little more Twitter followers than you, maybe they're people respect their opinion. Um, it can be just your customers, that couple that comes every year, two times a year, that says, like, you kind of encourage them, like, if you, uh, you know, tweet about us, or um, you, can, you can have them share their memories, and you can train, you give little perks, and then, you know, they're, they're telling their friends, you can sort of, just like the old days of referral business, and um, that has sort of shifted to being a little more social, a little more Facebook, and Twitter, and all these things. Um, but the anytime you can grab an influencer, someone with a big draw, you know, like having John in our Periscope helps, like people know John. If we just had a random person out there, it'd been like, maybe she's just talking to someone, but we have John, who you watch her a lot, you know. And so it's instantly, look at that guy, who just grabs a little more credible information. But ultimately, you have to be responsible about all these great new trends. Um, and something I have to do every day is client send something like, what about this cool thing? Does it fit? what your, really your core message is, is it fit for your customers? And do you have a good idea about it? Um, do you have a good idea to use it? Does it fit to have an internal 